to my channel. Today we're part 11 of this border collie. We're getting closer to finishing now and today's tutorial is going to focus mainly on this large ear. There's quite a bit going on with this ear but there's also not as much detail. We're going to be focusing more on our tonal values and um, maybe starting some of this top of the fur. We'll see. We'll see how long it takes us. Um, like I say, there's not a lot of detail. It's quite a dark ear, so we do need to go quite dark with the black. Probably go straight in with the black. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So I'm going to start, as usual, with the warm grey one as the base layer. Now, I'm not removing any of the graphite lines here because it's going to be quite dark. So there's no need for me to remove them. And I'm just following the shape of this ear. So it's it's curving upwards and then I'm going to taper those lines so they're nice and soft. And then just apply a bit of pressure just to help smooth out the tooth of this paper. So I'm going to just come along the top of this ear. Like so. So I'm hoping that we'll definitely get this ear finished today. Um, well, that is the goal. That is the point of this tutorial, get this ear done. And then um, the next tutorial will be finishing him off. So I'm hoping it won't be long and we'll all have some finished border collie drawings, which is exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody's pieces. Right, so I'm coming across, I'm going to do this section first. I'm then going to get my dark indigo. So there's not, this part of his head is um, quite dark, so we're probably not going to need as many colours. Um, and again, I'm following that base layer and the shape of the hair with this dark indigo. And following it upwards like so. Um, and then I'm going to get the warm grey four. So we have this part of his hair is obviously going to be blending into his ear. So I'm just going to bring this warm grey far across and then I'm going to start curving up. So across and then in A is where I can see them curving and we'll curve up. And then down here the hair is not curving up it's going to start curving downwards. So I'm just going to add that there. Um, and then we'll get the veins grey. We may just need to go straight into black, but I'm just wondering if the paint's grey. Yeah, I'm going to keep with the paint's grey. And I'm going to apply a bit of hard pressure. Now, where your ear and the head is joining, instead of following the hair going sort of away, I'm going to bring that hair down and sort of under. So what I'm trying to create is that effect that this hair is underneath this hair. So I'm going down and under. Down and under. Just It just helps for me, like, give that feeling that I'm creating this hair underneath the head hair. <laughs> and then I'm going to bring, sweep that back up like so. It just whatever works best for you. And then I'll get the black. Um, no, I'm going to get my walnut brown. So there is some brown tinges on the edge of this fur. So this is the walnut brown. 
um, and I'm just going to do it along the edges so sort of along here just where I can see this like brownish tinge so I'm not going to cover these edges with the black because I want that brown to shine through um, and then I'll get the black and again I'm just going to keep an eye on this sort of some loose fur here and then put it under and I'm using quite harsh pressure now I want this tucked down And then I'm just going to sort of taper my edges off as you get into that brown area. And as we do this, we can start to see that we're going to have to darken up the head hair. <laughs> I don't know a better way of describing it. We've got the ear hair and the head hair. <laughs> um, but that part of this hair does need darkening up. So we will do that. You can see just how dark this fur is going to go. The ear is going to be quite dark. Just going to darken here. Right, so I'm going to get my one grey six, um, which is quite a small pencil now, um, and I'm just going to come across the top here, and I'm just going to darken this hair. I'm just going to, I've got the dark indigo and I'm very lightly just glazing, so not applying much pressure, I just want a bit of a blue tinge from this dark indigo across the top, like so. Okay, and then back to the um, warm grey wool. And again, I'm just following the fur, marking in here, and then that's coming down um, sort of to about there. So this is another section. So again, I'm going to apply this base layer where the ear hair is. And I do press quite hard with, not too hard to erase all the tooth, but enough pressure that I'm flattening some of this tooth of the paper. Oops, marking the paper there. Okay, so the ear hair is going that way, and then the head hair, again with the warm grey worn. I'm just going to add this base layer in here so that we can connect these two areas nicely. And then it's just going to be the same process the dark indigo, a bit of Payne's grey, the black. Um, we might not need the Payne's grey, we may just use the dark indigo and go straight in with the black. We'll have a look what that looks like. So I'm actually I'm gonna get the one grey four. I think it's gonna be easier if we do this one grey four. Flick so I'm sort of flicking the pencil, following this fur so that I can sort of see where the head hair is sort of naturally creating some hair, and then I can do the ear. So that, that was the one grey four. This is the dark indigo. So I can just kind of naturally go around here. And just sort of in between there. Okay. This is coming up with the dark indigo.
Um, let me have a look. Yeah, I think we're going to just go straight in with the black. So I'm just going to add the stack in to go. I'm going to do the same again with these brown tips. Um, so I've got this brown. I'll drag that down a bit more. Taper in. I'm using very light pressure as well. It's going to give that really soft look to the fur. Um, and then I'm going to get the black. And again, we're going to blend where we've already got black. And then the blender over here. Now, to get this natural looking blend, we do we are going to get some of this dark fur coming over. So if you want to leave a little gap and then we can blend these in, that's perfectly fine. So fairly hard pressure because we want this area to be dark. And then I'm just going to blend into there and then taper those edges where it's going into the brown tips. So these brown tips is where the sun has bleached the fur. So it's just lighten the dark fur. And sometimes you can get this effect across a dark, like the whole of a dark body. So make sure if you're doing a commission... Um, that you notice the dark, uh, the any darker parts of the body which have been bleached by the sun. Pressing quite hard now. Just going to darken along here again. So you can go over areas if you feel like you need to darken them up, like I'm doing here. Like I just feel like this bit could be a little darker. Going along the tips again, just to help with the blending. You can see we're getting a nice, really nice dark here. And then I'm just going to bring this down. So I've left a gap. So I'm going to get the paint grey and I'm going to bring this across the head. across here I'm just going to cover this whole area with a paint grey I'm just going to start darkening up so when I'm when I say I'm trying to darken it up I'm applying more pressure and obviously we're just increasing the amount of layers that we've got on the page. So I tried to film this yesterday, but I had a bit of a moment where um, it was so dark and gloomy out and... I find that affects my mood. So uh, I'm filming this the day before it's due to go out, which I don't like to do normally, but it'll still be out on time. You'll be watching this when it was meant to be out. Okay, I'm then going to get the black. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of curve this in and then out. And I'm using light pressure, so I'm, I'm sort of using curved motions here. I'm just sort of curving these two parts together. And then where I need it to be darker, I'll apply harder pressure. Do the same here, so it's sort of curving round. Um, I'm going to get the dark sepia and I'm just going to use this over the black and over the Payne's grey just to help with this blend. And then I just add a little, a few little lines of the dark sepia just where I've got a few clumps. And then back to the black, and I'm just going to try and 
smooth this line out here. It's a bit sharp of a line. So I want this to look really smooth. I'm going to get back to the warm grey far. Go back over. The paint is grey. And then I've got the black again. And I'm just going to try and create this natural look to the ear. So it's all, I'm trying to get that really smooth blend. And this area is quite difficult because the fur changes direction so much. It is an, a difficult area to get looking right. Um, but we're starting to get it now. Just got to keep going. So if there's ever an area that you're not quite sure with, as long as you've not re removed all the two for the paper, you've not pressed down too hard, you will be able to go back in and add the two, uh, add layers, sorry. And as you can see now, we've got a nice blend between these two areas now. Um, as you can see how dark we've gone here, we're really going to have to darken this ear up again, um, but we can do that at the end. Okay, so back to the warm grey. Right, so I'm going to start coming over. Oops, sorry, sorry about the glare on the nose. It's the lighting. <laughs> Um, so we're going to start coming over here where the ear starts to fold. It's going to give us a natural shape of the ear. So what we're going to do is, again, we've got the warm grey one with the base layer, but I'm not going to bring it all the way down yet. I'm going to go across his head. So I'm going to bring it down about halfway, down about halfway across his ear, just so that we get the shape of this ear. Again, we've got these fur lines. I'm going to do that tooth, and then, so the fur has changed direction, so we've gone up here, and then as we bring it round, we're sort of curving around the ear, so it's curving around the ear flap. Now, if you remember at the beginning, I said, like, if you're not sure about a dog breed, you can check their breed standard to see what it says about the ears. So in Border Collies, obviously you can get some that have pricked ears, um, and some are either, uh, so carried erect, the pricked ears, um, and some are semi-erect like this guy, so they have this tipped. So we, we need to be conscious that this guy does have a tipped ear. He's not carrying this ear erect. And that's why we're getting this curve on the fur coming round this ear. And I'm going to bring this down. So the ear is now, we've started curving it. And then it's coming downwards where we've got the tip. And I'm not doing, so on the reference photo you'll be able to see we've got like a triangle shape at the edge. We're going to ignore that bit for now. We're going to just do come down here, which might sound complicated, but you'll see why we've ignored it. So I've come down the outside of the ear. There's a triangle tip here, so we've still got part of the ear to go. And I'm just following that shape. Okay. Then going to get the dark indigo. Again, and I'm just going to follow that third direction with the dark indigo not pressing hard we just want that glaze of blue just like we've got across the whole fur this is all going to tie in we've got we've started using the blue we're going to keep using this blue um, and we'll add hints of the purple as well that i can see and by tying it in across all of the fur it all just ties in nicely so you can see with the blue how i'm starting to follow this curve down the ear Some loose hairs. Don't forget those little bits of hairs that are coming away. So that's where your tapered lines come in. I can't believe that we've nearly finished this guy. Right, so I brought this line about halfway down this ear. 
but I'm not going to bring the blue all the way up. So I'm going to bring this blue about halfway, well, not even halfway, just along the edge here. Um, because there's no blue at that edge. So you want to leave that warm grey base exposed here. Um, I've then got the walnut brown. Again, just along this part of the tips where I can see it. Um, I've then going to use the mold. We've got purple along this edge. So I'm just going to do that again, tapering my edges. And now I am going to use the Payne's Grey because obviously it's still quite dark here. So we will get the black in, but it does get lighter towards the edge of his ear. So we're going to get the Payne's Grey first, which will help with our blends between it all. So it's all about just like looking at your colours and finding out the order that you think could make it easy for you, but also to help with the blending um, if you want that smooth, natural look. So again, I'm going to come in with this Payne's Grey and I'm just going to get that layered in over the top now. Always following the fur direction. And I know I go on about it all the time and I say it all the time, but it really does help. And you can see just by how far we've got, if you've followed along with this tutorial, how much the fur has changed already with this piece. And how much it's changing already just on the ear. And I know the ear is quite a large area to cover. Quite a scary area, but... Scary is because you've got such a large white area. Um, but once you've got the colour down, it becomes a bit easier. And once you... It's all about finding the shapes. Like, once we've found those shapes, you'll be fine. Always look for the shapes within the reference photos. And break it down into little sections like we're doing here. So we're doing the outside of the ear. And it just breaks it down into smaller sections which are easier to cope with. Now I'm sorry if the dog barks at any point during this. I am expecting a delivery today. Um, I'm not sure what time. They haven't given me a time slot. So I'll apologise now. <laughs> I will try and stop the recording before it gets too bad right and then I'm just doing it again along the edge and I, I am tapering those edges ever so slightly into this warm grey area um, I'm then going to get the black so the black we're going to use quite harsh pressure here and then about halfway along we start getting it lighter so we're going to just blend here so harder pressure again get that really nice and dark and then as we start coming away from this darker area just going to relieve some of that pressure and it's going to allow that pain's grey to show through even more again this is also personal preference if you would like a really dark ear go for a really dark ear um, if you don't see this blue because um, I'd like you to look at this reference photo, be able to draw what you see as well. Follow my techniques, like how I'm doing the fur. But if you see more colours than me, add them in. If you don't see as many colours as me, don't add them in. Like I want you to be able to apply these techniques to the piece as you're following along. But also, if you were to do this as a standalone, like they're the colours that you've seen. Which will also make your piece unique. Right, so you can see I'm starting to lighten my pressure now. So I'm not pressing as hard. It's going to start to lighten up. I'm just going to come along with this black. Along here. Got a bit of a darker line there. So I'm just mapping in any darker areas I can see, but... I'm not pressing in too hard. So just keep going. And again, tapering those edges. So I don't know if we'll get much of the actual dog done today. I think this is definitely going to be focused on this ear. 
It's taken a while just to get here. <laughs> okay. So we've got the black along here now. I'm going to get the one grey four where we've left the base layer. Um, I'm going to get this one grey four and I'm going to use shorter pencil strokes and I'm coming along with this one grey four over the top here. Um, and I'm going to get the warm grey 2. Okay, we've got the warm grey 2. Um, I'm just coming over the top, help blend, harder pressure, and then right over the top of the warm grey 5 and the warm grey 1. Just want it to be a bit of a darker warm grey, but not as dark as the warm grey 4. There's also a bit of blue that I've not got in here, so I'm just going to add this blue. Dark indigo over the top, very gently. I don't want it to be bright, bright, but there is that hint of blue there. Okay, then we'll get the base layer of warm grey one. I'm going to do this little triangle corner. So it's not coming. So we've got this curve of the ear going down. This triangle ear is sort of going upwards. Um, so it's going towards the top right corner of the paper. So that's what I'm going to do with this base layer. I'm just going to curve it upwards first, and then it's going to just to the side. So kind of up and to the side. And then as you get lower down, we start just curving round to the bottom. So this is going to make, this is going to be the tip of our ear. So we've got how large this ear actually is. You can see how, how much of the space we've got to cover. Um, so I'm going to take the uh, warm grey. No, we're going to get the walnut brown. And I'm going to do the walnut brown along this edge because I can see these brown tones. So I'm just following the edge here. And this bit of fur. So I'm just mapping in, mapping the shapes that I can see with this brown and building up to that little corner. So we're starting to get this little like indent so that we can see where these two join. And that's brown. Uh, I then go with the mauve again, just a hint of purple where I can see it. Very lightly, it's not in your face, it's just a hint. Um, and then I'm going to get the cold grey 6 over this walnut brown area. And I'm just going to try and blend a little bit into there. So I'm using very short pencil strokes. I'm just creating some of those loose hairs there. And then going over the top. And then just in this corner here, more warm grey, uh, cold grey six. Just here. Like so. Um, then get the warm grey two, and I'm just gonna. I'm using circular motions here, just because I want it really, really smooth. Um, and I'm just gonna go over this base layer here. Blend these two bits together. Okay, and then I'm gonna get the warm grey four, and I'm coming across back to the fur lines. And I'm just going to start blending here. A few more looser hairs there. Um, and then get the paints grey. 
I'm just coming along the bottom of this here. Yeah, like so. Um, the warm grey six, just where this part of the ear is darker. We want that separation, and I'm making sure that I'm blending. So tapering those edges to help get this smooth blend and going over those other colours that we can see. And it's just going to really help with the blend. Um, and then the one grey two again, just back over and just to help with this blending. Okay, so I just need to darken these darker bits up again. So I've got the cold grey. Uh, no, I'm going to get the paint grey. And I'm just going to press a little harder. Just want these to be quite dark. Not quite dark enough. So we need... The main thing with realism is this contrast. So like how we've started getting dark here, we need to darken this to make this look more realistic. But having these dark values and your light values... So what makes something look realistic? So that's what I'm trying to get here. Trying to get those values correct. And it sometimes is a back and forth between areas. And that's fine. Um, this is my walnut brown. Just a little tip here. And then I've got the warm grey warm. And I'm just going to blend over the top. And I'm creating some of these loose straggler hairs that I can see with the warm grey one. Like so. Okay. Right. It's time to fill in this really large area. So I've got the warm grey one. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this one grey one to outline sort of where this head hair is. So coming down in this curved shape to about halfway down where we've got the marks for this inner ear. And then that sort of curves up here. And then it's curving round to this point where we've just done the ear. So... Don't know if you can see this shape that we've made. So you're going about halfway down to so if you line it up with the eye, come in line with the eye, and then you're gonna curve the line round. And this is one quite a dark area, but there is still shapes in here. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking at the shape. So I'm coming to about halfway, this point here, diagonal line to here. Um and I'm just going to mark this from here and I'm about, I don't know if you can see this shape. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the shapes that I can see and this is a dark shape. So I'm coming in and just getting this shape in. So this is my base layer and we're just going to break it down into the shapes again. This is all just shapes that we can see. So this is uh, the warm grey one is the base layer here. Um, we'll then get the dark indigo. So what I'm doing is I'm looking where the head is and all of this is quite dark to here. So there's like a line here. So I'm going to mark that line in and that's going to keep going around here. But this fur... This fur is curving up and into that ear, and this bit of fur is sort of curving round the ear. So you can just about see the fur direction. So I'm just going to map in this blue first. And because this is dark, we are just going to go straight into using the black. So I'm just going to add a couple of layers of the blue. I want a bit of blue showing through. Um, and then I'm going to get the black. 
then I'm just going to go under that fur there and then bring it out. So as if I'm going under the fur, bring it out and then this is all dark. So I'm going to press quite hard again to get this nice dark layer of black. And then as I start coming up here, I'm going to just slightly lighten the pressure on the black. Just so we can get a nice blend into the Payne's Grey area. I'm just going over several times any rough lines, harsh edges that I can see within this actual bit of fur and just blending out. Um, and then I'm going to get the Payne's Grey over the top in this corner where it's quite lighter. I'm just going to get this Payne's Grey. And again, it's just going to help smooth out this area. And blend nicely into there okay um i'm just gonna get this warm gray one so we've got this section of fur that's sort of curving over so i'm just gonna add this bit of warm gray uh that's not one gray one one gray one as a base layer here um i've then got the black so there is a darker section here so if i'm following this curved line it's sort of here so I'm just going to mark in this darker line and then I'm, I am going to darken and taper those edges into that lighter paint grey area that we've got going on. And this is just a clump of fur that's just a little bit darker so we're just going to map that in. I'll then get the paint grey just again to help with this blend. over the top. Um, I'm just going to take the warm grey too as well, just very gently over the top, just to help with this blending. Gives a nice little effect as well. Right. Um, and then I'm going to get the warm grey two, uh, warm grey one, sorry. And from where I've got this um, mapped in, the fur sort comes down and round. So this is the base layer going in again. It's amazing how large this ear really is. A lot of it is just fluff. <laughs> it's a very fluffy dog that we're drawing. I think the next piece, um, I found a nice spaniel photo that we can use. Because I know a lot of people struggle with spaniel ears. So I think an ear is going to be the focus of another tutorial in the future. Right, so that's the base layer down. I'm going to get the dark indigo and I'm coming down here with the dark indigo Oops. and it's just curving around. I'm also going to blend over where we've got some of this fur just to help with this blend as we um, will be blending here getting this to all look like one part of the ear. So I'm just going to follow the shape of this ear around. So it's going to curve in here. So let me just get this base layer down here. Hang on. And then we can really follow the shape of this ear. So if I just colour in this whole shape, which would probably have been easier to do earlier on. I think by doing it in little shapes, like this is a large area that we've got with a base layer down, which can be quite overwhelming. Um, so if it is, break it down into smaller steps. Um, don't worry. Right, so this is 
curving round here and this all I'm doing is I'm looking at a clump of fur that I can see and that's what I'm following the fur direction of and then that's curving round this area is quite dark so we're not worried too much about detail we we're going to be focusing on that values and then I'm just going to bring that down here Uh, I think I'm going to, I'm just looking at my reference photo. Um, so that's curving up there. Yeah, I'm going to work on this as a section. So I'm just going to bring this blue a bit further down here. And I'm going to work on this bit as a section first. Just to make it easier. So I'm gonna, I am going to go in with the paint grey. Um, just because I'm still not quite sure on the little bits of sections. Um, so while I'm building up confidence to go in with a black, um, I'm just going to go in with the paint grey, which is another way of doing it. Like if you're not sure about what you're doing, because we're building up the layers slowly, go in with another colour and try and work it out with the other colour. And by doing so, you'll, you will build up the confidence to go in with those dark colours. Making sure that everything's blending here. That's curling around the ear. This is the tip of the ear. I'm going to say, depending... Um, what happens next time? I'm going to see if we can either finish the film in, in the next part. I'm, I'm thinking it might be a two-part thing, but we will see. Because the ear is quite large. Um, we're going to get the ear done this time round. But it would be nice to have him finished. Right. Hair on my paper, there we go. Okay, so this is the Payne's Grey, just over that dark indigo. And if you're still not sure about what you're doing, go in with a layer of dark sepia. Um, that'd be fine. I've got the black. Now, I know that there's like a clump of fur here, so I'm just going to go over that line there. And then that clump of fur kind of comes down here into another clump. So I'm just going to darken that bit. And then I'm going to get the... So I've marked in a clump of fur. I've got the Payne's Grey again. And I'm just going to darken this section with the Payne's Grey. So that means another layer, bit of harder pressure. Not too much because we want to be able to go over the top. Just bringing that round here and then I've got the black and I'm coming from the tip of the ear here which is darker I'm just going to lighten as I come into that clump going along the edge where it's darker tapering where it's getting lighter at the edges and tapering back into this light grey area coming down here this is darker where we've got a clump of fur and then very lightly with the black going over the top of this paint grey and that's curving up and over there okay I'm just going to get the mauve because there is a purple tinge here that's just 
disappearing so I'm just going over the top blending it into those blues um, then the paint's grey just to blend that purple tone in back over the paint's grey here Okay, I'm just going to give that one grey five. This area is still looking a bit light, so just here. At one grey four, sorry, not five. Just going to darken that little area there. And then blend out into that one, two. Um, paint's grey. Just trying to get this blend nicely. Okay, right, um, we're getting there. We are getting there with this here now. Um, so we have another clump of fur here that I can see. So I'm coming in with the dark indigo again. And it's a clump of fur that's sort of curving around here. So I'm just going to do this as a clump of fur. So the dark indigo over the top of our warm grey one base. Start curving round here. So now you can see, just by looking at the shapes, we've got a clump of fur here, a clump of fur here. So, and this bit that we've not got any colour on is another clump of fur. So. Just by slowly building up in little shapes, we're starting to see these little clumps of fur which make up the whole ear. So we're not drawing individual hairs, we're drawing these clumps of fur and that's what uh, we're focusing on when we're looking at the shapes. Um, I'm going to get the Payne's Grey again. I'm going to do this bit of fur first, this section, before we move on to that other section. So by breaking it down, I'm just sharpen this, breaking it down into these sections is really helpful because that's what you're focusing on when it comes to doing areas like this. Okay, so this is just the Payne's Grey. And again, I'm tapering those edges here where it's going to join the head, um, which we will do at a later stage. I'm just really trying to focus on this ear. It's been a long tutorial already and we're about halfway. Um, and then the black. And this is really dark, so I'm just going to use a heavier pressure now. And I am just going to go in with this black along the bottom here. Again, following that fur direction, but um, and then I'm hoping once I film this, I have a horse drawing to finish. It's my first horse in coloured pencils, um, and I I've enjoyed it. It's been a challenge, but it's been a difficult drawing. When you're used to drawing <laughs> one animal. Um, but yeah, she's coming along really nicely. So I'll be sharing that on my social medias if you're not following me. Um, you'll be able to see that on my other social medias. I've not filmed any of the horse. Okay. Um, and then the paint's grey for this clump of fur. Darken this up. Then 
I'm just going over those areas where it needs to be blended nicely. You can add as many layers of the paint grey or the dark indigo as you want. It just depends how blue toned you want your dog to look. Um, and then I've got the black again and I'm just going to... Any darker areas I can see, map them in. So that's coming around here. Just going to add this in with the black. Just so lightly. Okay. Right, before I do any more of this fur, I'm going to add in this pink part of the ear that we can see. Um, so to do that, um, I'm going to get the one grey one again as a base. Um, I just need to sharpen it. Right, I've got the one grey one. So I'm going to um, ignore the fact that there's hair covering it. I'm just going to mark in. And I'm using circular motions because I want it to be smooth. So I'm just going to mark in where I can see this lighter area. So it's coming up here. And because, because we've got dark fur over the top, we'll be able to draw the dark fur over it. So that's why we're ignoring the fur. I'm then going to take the cinnamon. And I'm going to very lightly circular motions. I'm using circular motions so that we get a nice smooth look. So circular motions over this. You'll also see I'm not changing to that flat. So the sharp side, I'm keeping it on that flat side so that it all looks nice and smooth, blended together. Don't want any harsh lines. No harsh lines. Like so. Um, I've then got the walnut brown. Very lightly. It's like a brownish, greyish colour in this ear. It doesn't have to be accurate to the photo, we just want to try and get it close. Again, circular motions. Nice smooth lay down of this colour. I'm then going to take Payne's Grey. Now when you use the Payne's Grey, you're going to want to use really light pressure. If you struggle with your pressure, hold your pencil higher up so that you can so that when you're applying you can't press too hard. If I do that, you can see that I have to press really lightly and again those circular motions. And it's just going to give us that greyish tinge over the top of that cinnamon and brown that we've got laid down. You may need another layer for cinnamon. It's not quite as pink. I don't know, that looks okay actually. And I'm just, again, circular motions. Over the top here. Okay, I'm going to just do another layer of the cinnamon. Circular motions. Over the top. So you're really starting to get that nice, sort of, it's like a muddy pink colour. <laughs> it's quite hard to describe it. Um, and then I'm just going to do the same again. Light pressure with the Payne's Grey over the top. Yeah, I'm liking that colour now. That's kind of the colour we're after. Okay, and I'm going to get the warm grey too. And I'm going to apply harder pressure and I'm just going to Use this to help smooth it all out and push that pigment into the paper. So I have got some darker marks, but I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that at all. Right, then going to get the Payne's Grey. Where we've got some of these, <coughs> excuse me, darker hairs coming over the top. So we've got one sort of right in the middle of here. 
and then we've got these hairs that are just coming over, coming across the bottom of the ear. You're starting to get this really natural look to the ear now, so just get some of those whisper hairs that's covering this area, and there's a darker hair there as well. I'm just going to get the black, so if you want the black in some of these darker hairs, use your black. Um, and we've got sort of a hair coming up here, that will blend. So I'm just adding a few, not worried about placement, we just know there's a few wisp of hairs over that black area. Right, and then it's back to just building up this colour again, so uh, the dark indigo over the top here. So the way that we're just going to finish this here is basically these steps. The warm grey one as a base layer, your dark indigo for your blue tones that are shining through the fur, um, and your black and Payne's grey. And it's just about looking for all those shapes that you can see. It's all about the shapes. <laughs> um, so I'm going to get my Payne's grey. So I think that the next full tutorial will come out January sometime. Um, I'm not going to be doing another one this year. Um, I may do a few focus tutorials like um, drawing eyes, dog paws, stuff like that. Uh, but the next big tutorial will come out uh, next month. Um, I've got the black and I'm just going to bring this along here. So this part of the fur sort of meets here upwards and then that bit here curls round. Perfect. I'm just darkening any areas here that you see you just need darkening. Okay, right, let's keep going. <laughs> Got a lot to do. Still, it's quite a large ear. It's a very large ear. <laughs> right, so we have another section of fur here that I'm going to mark in. So it comes down here. Now, I've not got the whisper hairs in yet. We can, we'll do that after. I'm just going to map in this shape. You can see... And that kind of curves to about here. So I've just followed the reference shape, reference photo and the shapes I can see. And this is sort of one clump of fair there. So over the top and I'm just going to get this one grey one base layer in. And then get some of these whisper hairs coming out. Like so. Um, and then I've got the dark indigo. Again, make sure you follow that for the direction. So I'm not going to finish this section because there's quite a lot going on in this part of the ear. So we're going to map, map in certain areas, get other areas darker and just build this bottom part of the ear slowly. It's quite a complicated area to do as this ear. It's not been the easiest tutorial for you guys, has it? <laughs> There's lots going on. I should have picked something simpler. Ah, well, chuck you in in the deep end. Best way. <laughs> Right, so I've got the warm grey and I'm coming again, if I, I'm just following this part of the, I'm just trying to work out where's best 
to follow for you guys because this is coming down into the ear here so about so if we, we're coming about halfway down here and we're going to do this as the ear um because it does obviously blends nicely into the fur but we're just focusing on the ear in, in this section so i'm just gonna map in so when you're looking at the reference photo this part of the fur starts blending into again another area that's been bleached by the sun so we're not going to include this area we'll do that next time so you want to bring your base layer up to the dark points um, and that's just going to keep coming round here. So we're nearly there. We have this little section to do of the ear. So we're just going to... So we've got this bit mapped in here. So this is dark fur and that comes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this black. Do you see how they've got a bit of fur coming over here so this is over that pink so that's a clump of fur there you've then got a bit of your pink showing and that's another bit of fur curving round so that gives you a nice area here and that's a clump of fur so base layer coming down that's a clump of fur so um, I get the paints grey just to help me map in this clump of fur and that blends little furs over the top and that all blends in nicely there so it's literally about blocking in these little shapes that we can see so i'm just going to get the dark indigo over this clump and do it little sections by little sections um, and then the black and again comes over here and down and that's a clump of fur there I then I'm gonna take this one grey one here and I'm just gonna bring it into this section here right let's get this area covered with the one grey one as the base layer And then we can just break it down into all the little sections with our pencils. So I'm just going to use the base layer. I'm going to cover this section up. Um, it won't look as daunting and we can focus on area by area. Section by section and we'll get this ear finished. Very, very close now guys to having an ear. Get that base lay down. Yeah, look. Okay. Right. I'm going to take the dark indigo and I'm going to use this dark indigo to help map in some of these shapes I can see. So we've got that clump of fur there. I can see that there's another clump of fur coming around here, creating again like a V shape. So there's like another V shape here that blends out into a warmer colour. So we're going to get this mapped in with the dark indigo. So where the warmer colours are, I'm not going to be using this dark indigo. Um, and then down here again, leave a gap, so we've got a clump of fur, and that's going to come up here into another, so there's like another V shape, coming up into another shape here, so that's creating another V, so I'm just using the dark indigo to map in all the shapes, and then we've got another so this kind of is quite a big clump of fur here, sort of all coming from one area. And it doesn't matter if you miss a shape, 
Like I say before, as soon as this photo is taken, the dog will have moved and the fur will have changed. We just want a resemblance of the fur and what the fur is doing. Um, so that's another clump of fur there. We've got one here. And then sort of along the ears. Back as well. So you see how it just all I'm doing is I'm looking at the shapes I can see and mapping in any of those dark blue shadows and the blue tones that I can see. Blue tone here. That comes down. And that's a dark highlight there as well. Okay. So I've kind of got some shapes mapped in now. And we can just build up from there. So it's our building blocks. So I've got the Payne's Grey. So I'm just going to start building up from here with this Payne's Grey. And I'm not worried if there's no dark indigo in some of these areas. Because it's going to be quite dark. This is, again, some hairs coming over that pinkish area. And then I'm just going to start building up here now. Um, right, I had to change the battery. So I'm just going to keep building up here with the paint grey. Harder pressure where you need it. Or you can just build it up slowly. That's perfectly fine as well. I'm just following all this fur direction. So this area is quite dark here as well. So I'm just going to use the Payne's Grey to blend in across. Tapering off those edges. And I'm going over these dark indigo places where I can see. So this is going to be black here. And there is actually some brown and purple with tinges just on the edge of this here. So get the walnut brown. And I'm just gonna add them in because we're starting we're gonna be starting to darken all this up in a not far away from darkening it all up. Um we're just starting to build up all these layers. So um let's get some of these other colours in. So this is the walnut brown, just where it's got a little few tinges on the edge of this ear. Coming down. So I'm just gonna blend taper those edges off. And that is where it goes into the lighter brown area. Um, I've then got the mauve. I've got a few purple tones just on this edge. So, okay. And then back to the Payne's Grey. So we've got this Payne's Grey here. So I'm just going to darken this bit. Go over that. And then going to get the black because this is a dark shadow that I'm mapping in here. So I'm coming in with a black over the top and I'm just gonna really darken up this clump of fur. So this is a nice shadowed section. Um, and this is a shadowed section. So I'm just gonna darken some of these areas up where I've got the panes gray down with this black. Um, 
Right, I'm going to take the dark indigo and very lightly I'm going to sweep this round. And this is where we've got some warmer tones, but I still want that blue just to help with my blending of everything. So very, very lightly with this blue dark indigo. I have to put this one into an extender. Right, this is where we're going to start really seeing this ear get in there now. Very lightly. Just still following fur direction. Okay, I've then got the warm grey six. This is in a pencil extender now, but and I'm just going to cover this area with a warm grey six. Fairly hard a pressure, not too hard, don't press down too hard, but we'll bring this warm tone into this ear now. I'm just applying this warm grey six all the long way. I can see this in this section. And it comes down here as well. I'm sorry about the wobbling of the camera as well. Um, Apparently it's not very stable my tripod so I'll have to look into that next time. As my as my desk shakes it seems to be shaking the tripod. Right, we're nearly there with this one row six. Okay, and then I'm gonna get the paint grey. And I'm going to darken down here with this Payne's Grey. Pressing a bit harder now. I want this to be quite a bluish dark shadow. Okay, make sure you're blending it over previous sections just so that we get that nice smooth blend. So, come down into the shadow as well and bring this paint's grey up again, blending, so tapering it out into that warm grey area. Um, and then we need this to be tapered out as well. This section is quite a dark area along here. Just like so. And then get that warm grey six again over the top of that paint's grey and where we will just want that warm tones. And I'm just going to darken this bit of this ear up again. So it is black fur is. I find does take a while because it's all about building up these layers and slowly getting it as dark as you need it. Now you can go straight in some of these areas you could have gone straight in with a black. It's not something that I do and I don't do it because I like these blue tones to shine through. It really does, for me, it really gives that extra depth to the fur that I'm looking for. Other people I know will go straight in with black. And if that's what you want to do to speed it up, go straight in with black. I I, I don't. <laughs> um, I'm now going in with the black. And I'm just going to start blending these darker areas again. 
So we've got this tip of the ear that just needs to darken off. And then darken these shadows. And you'll get to a point, now that I'm adding this black, I feel like I'm drawing on butter. I've got enough layers down on the paper for this black to then go down and just add extra layers and extra depth. Like so. And just along this bottom corner here. So we're nearly there. I know it has been a long tutorial, guys. But I did want this one to be just about the ear. And I know the ear was a large section of fur to do. Taper those edges, you want some nice rough edges. Uh, not rough, uh, soft edges, sorry. If you want a long one. And then just along over the top here, some of those curves. And I'm just very lightly glazing this black over these Payne's grey area just to add a bit more darkness and depth and then pressing harder where I want it to be black and darker okay. and then down here it needs to be black and then the Payne's grey Just over the top there. Okay. Nearly there, guys. <laughs> right. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm just going to darken where I've got the pain, uh, the dark indigo. And then very lightly with this dark indigo. So we used the dark indigo initially to map in these shadows. So I'm going back over and getting the shadows added in again. But I still want that hint of blue through the rest of the fur so I'm very lightly adding that in now so next time we'll definitely be getting the rest of this black fur done um, I'm going to try and finish it but I think we'll do another session of black fur and then do the rest of the white collar and finishing touches so I think it probably do another two parts, um, just so it's not as long as a uh, section to film and complete for you guys. Um, so the paint's grey, because I know this is this has been very long, but I wanted this section to be done. And now that we've got another large section out of the way, maybe we'll focus on this black fur and the obviously the brown tinge, and then the final part will be the rest of this white collar faded edges and then the finishing touches um, I want to make it as easy as I can for you guys don't want it to be too too over complicated by me doing too much and for too long so I'm just following the shapes again with this Payne's grey darken those shadows Very lightly, because we're going to get that warm grey colour in again. Where we can see the warm grey colour. Okay, and then the warm grey six. Here, so I'm just going to go along here with a long grey six. You can see that we're using quite long pencil strokes, so the fur here is quite long. So instead of using the short pencil strokes, we have been using long pencil strokes. So your pencil strokes sort of represent the fur length. So if you were to do all this with really short pencil strokes, you'd end up with shorter looking fur. 
Um, obviously, the longer your pencil strokes, the longer the fur will look. Um, I'm going to just get the black and where some of these shadows are darker. I'm just going to go straight in first with the black. Again, taper those edges so you're going to lighten your pressure as you're going into those other colours. Just where I've got these shadows. Don't want to lose them. I'm going to taper those edges outwards. Um, there's like a couple here. Okay, and I'm going to get the paints grey again. Long here, where it's darker. Here, right over that block. And then I'm back in with the warm grey six. And I'm just going to really darken now where it's warm tones. Still following that fur direction, looking at the shapes, creating those clumps of fur. Now this isn't the exact same as the reference photo. We've not followed every tiny little clump. Um, and that is fine because we know that we're just trying to get a realistic look. We're not trying to copy the photo exactly. We're trying to create a dog and an ear of a dog that looks realistic but we don't need all these clumps to be exact and that's like i say before that's because as soon as this dog moved all those clumps would have changed um i've got the warm gray two and i'm going to use the warm gray two on the edge to help with this blending so don't worry if you're thinking as i'm drawing this like oh you're not following the i don't see that shadow i don't see that clump follow the reference photo and just add in clumps that you can see don't worry if it's not exact, it doesn't need to be. We just want that resemblance of the clumps of fur. Um, I've got the black again, and I'm just going to start blending some of these clumps again. You see how it just all starts to nicely blend together. And any areas where you've got rough lines, um, take the warm grey too. Um, it acts as a really nice blendable pencil and it'll help with your blending. Um, this is the Payne's grey. I just want a bit more of a bluish tone here. And then the black, I'm just going to darken this. Okay, I'm just going to get the walnut brown again um, in this ear. I'm just going to circular motions. And you can go over the top of those hairs. You can always add them back in if they disappear. But I'm just going to darken around the edges. Um, 
and fade out and then get the cinnamon again just in the middle of this ear Paints grey very lightly so you probably will end up adding in some of the um, hair but that's fine just needed this to look a bit darker and I'll just go back in with a black and add some of these loose hairs like so okay guys I think we now have an ear we may need to make a few tweaks on it um but yeah I'm pretty happy with how this ear's turned out and I know it's been a long tutorial but I hope you have enjoyed it if you're not already subscribed to the channel please consider subscribing I will be doing a lot more real-time tutorials with you guys I'll be doing focus tutorials, so we'll focus on eyes and noses. Um, I will be uh, doing another real-time tutorial next year. Um, and we'll probably be doing a spaniel, I think is what we're going to do. We're going to have a look at spaniel ears. Um, so yeah, please like, comment. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. And I will see you all in the... Next part, let me zoom you out before I disappear um, and I will show you the whole piece. So I've turned my studio light off um, so you don't have that glare and yeah, we're almost there guys. We just have this little section to do. Um, we're going to get this blended all in and we're going to start moving down his face next time. So I will see you in the next part. Thanks for watching. Bye guys.